and c- comparing that vertical to the horizontal approach, when you see that crossover step late in rehab, how you mentioned that can be a pretty bit of a red flag that the process hasn't gone quite where you would have liked it. Um, is, would that athlete typically test well in, in the capacity test like you mentioned, like your Nord board? They, they can do, and... yeah, they, they definitely can do. And, and that's where um, it doesn't happen so much now, but um, uh, early days, yeah, I used to get athletes where they were, you know, literally at the end and the club was sort of looking for a tick box to sort of send them back and those things could, could happen. Um, and it, yeah, it was, it was not good because you just knew that doing something about that was really going to be quite tough when you're right at the, at the pointy end. Um, so yeah, it, it, that, that can be a, I, I personally, I feel like I've failed if a lot of those things are allowed to persist so, so far down the, down the track, it's something you want to chase a lot earlier. And now, you know, looking at your website, there's obviously a lot of uh, kinematics involved in your, in your testing. Uh, is that where you'll, in terms of this, the skill aspect of, of moving and, and, and running, you'll give that, to, they, they go through obviously their objective markers, but also how are they moving with change of direction and at, at high speed? Um, and then you might give them some drills and some things that they need to do from a motor learning point of view, yeah. as well as their rehab or as part yeah, of their rehab. That's right. We, we, I sort of use like um, two analogies with this. You've got the you know the racing car team, so you've got the car and you've got the driver, and, and the car is you know um, measures of capacity, so ability for the leg to absorb and produce force, and you've got the racing car driver, which is the ability to under pressure for the, the body to execute things in a way that is you know. Um, safe rather than uh, likely to sort of cause problems. So really, it's about you know the, the the kinematic stuff and the biomechanics. I'm not a I'm I'm not a classic sort of coming from a biomechanics stream. It was really just born out of um, wanting to remove biases. Uh, you know, because we think we see things. You know, especially when you start talking about skill acquisition. But you'd be surprised um, how it, your biases can sort of play out and can mislead you a little bit. And you mentioned uh, early on with um, a couple of influences of Dave and, and Warren, uh, the importance of a thorough diagnosis uh, in you know, working in elite sport. Sometimes time can be um, challenging. W- what about with some of the lower limb injuries that are more significant and athletes facing a long period of time? Uh, what would be a consistent time frame that you would need to go through your battery of tests to, to be able to have all the information that you need? To feel um, so it depends on the stage. Yeah, particularly with what I do now, pitch ready stuff. It, it probably depends on the on the stage of it. So, um, uh, and and really the the numbers involved. So we do whole squads, for example, within a day. But it's really like a Formula One pit crew. So you've got you know a person on each sort of job. As where if, if you're just working one on one with an athlete, then really it becomes a bit more hierarchy. You know, I'll, I'll sort of take on a lot of the the flow of the you know, the prep and the, the actual cat calibration and the capture and then the things that sort of come after that. So so a typical um, somewhere around sort of an hour, hour and a half, really, to, to, yep. to go through it all and then um, sort of go away and um, synthesize it all. And then normally you sit down with the with the staff afterwards or the, you know, if it's, if it's uh, more community level, you'll sit down with the physio that, um, you know, or the rehab coach that's, in, you know, responsible for looking after that person and from a growth point of view professionally what have been some significant challenges that you've faced and what have you learned from them i think um like the programs that i've been involved in where they actually haven't had good success probably are the ones that you learn the most from because if you're in a team and the, and everyone's winning then no one really asks too many questions um and as, as we're the ones where things haven't really gone to plan then um if people are asking questions you know most time they do a review in a football club is because the the results haven't been what they wanted and, and everyone's sort of scurrying around um so it, it, a lot of those things made you um really think quite critically about your processes and, and to, as you got experience you were really trying to think of those things in, in advance you know what can go wrong here how can i how can i show evidence that you know that's been mitigated or we've you know we've tried to control for that and you know, all these different things. So really um, probably the the programs that really weren't going well were probably the ones that probably sharpened me up a little bit in, in terms of how I tend to tend to operate. And you've worked in different codes as well. Like is that through building a, a strong network base of people working in different spots? Was that deliberate early on or that sort of, sort of naturally progressed? I, I think it was a bit of both, to be honest. Like I, I really wanted to do sort of different things. So, um, you know, the, the Raiders just, just sort of happened. Um same thing. I went over to the UK. I was, I was going to work over at um, 
sail sharks and I wasn't there. I was supposed to be there for two years and not long after getting there, the Brumbies rang up and said, oh, same thing, do you want to come home? So it feels like every time I leave Canberra, I just get sucked back like a yeah. in, in, into, the, into the vortex. But um, it, again, that was a sort of an organic um, thing. Uh, and then, then everything after that was sort of just about chasing uh, opportunity or new, you know, new things sort of as it went, you know, the AFL was the same thing. It was, um, and, and it's, it's in, in hindsight, it probably wasn't the reason that I did it, but in hindsight, it's been really good because you can see the commonalities between sort of different sports. Um, and, and each of them has their own sort of subtle cultural thing that they, um, you know, from the SNC world and from the rehab space, they all have their sort of their, their ways of doing things and, in certain situations, I reckon, um, you know, evolution is that that's, that's a good thing. But then um, certain injuries, um, the way other codes tended to look after it, uh, like the rugby codes, for example, have a, have a really um, strong emphasis on strength, for example. So if you get a lot of tendon-based injuries or some of these kind of overuse ones, you know, the way they do things, I think, is, is, is really good. 